Hi, everyone. This is Daniela Camboni for StansberryInvestor.com. And before I bring you today's interview, I just want to share with you a report we have just put out that I highly urge you check out because with most investors going about life, investing, and retirement planning as if nothing unusual has happened to our financial system, not realizing the repercussions of the 11 trillion that's been pumped into the US financial system in the past 18 months alone, it's especially a good read at this moment in time. At least four billionaires have stated publicly that Americans aren't paying enough attention to this development. And now a former Goldman Sachs banker says sooner than most people think, millions of Americans will potentially be pushed down out of the middle class, out of private retirement, and out of a decent life based on independence and privacy into a collectivist nightmare he calls financial lockdown. So find out how to protect yourself, your money, and your family with a free copy of his new report. In it, he'll show you the four steps he recommends that you take immediately. So if you'd like a free copy of the report, you simply have to go to wakeupcall2021.com. Again, that's wakeupcall2021.com. That said, I had a lot of emails asking for my next guest to return to keep the educational content coming. So please welcome back to the show, Mark Yaxley. He's the managing director over at Strategic Wealth Preservation. They are a bullion dealer and a storage provider in the Cayman Islands. Uh, Mark, welcome back. Good to see you again. Always nice to be with you, Daniela. Yeah, well, happy to talk the general precious metals landscape with you. A lot of news happening in this space. You always give me the inside scoop. Uh, people want to know why prices aren't higher. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, but first, let's talk about Evergrande. And as we know, this is a huge news item, which you say could possibly impact the precious metals landscape here. How so? Well, definitely. It's kind of a two-part question. The first part of the question is, will Evergrande impact the precious metals price? And if it does, what can precious metal investors expect to happen? I think that's one of the questions on people's minds right now. The second part of that question is a lot easier to answer. We know based on historical events, when there is a crisis event or, or, or a strong reaction in the equities markets, what tends to happen with precious metals is that we see an instant or, or a short-term pullback. We saw this in 2008 when the Lehman Brothers announced their bankruptcy on September 15, 2008. Over the next five weeks, gold and silver actually pulled back 17%. People were selling gold and silver, looking for liquidity. And then they went, you know, at the precious metals went on a three and a half year bull run. Gold appreciated 120% during that time. Silver was up over 300%. But that initial time period, which is what people are wondering right now, what will happen? There's actually a pretty strong pullback. Fast forward to March 2020, when the world started to realize that COVID was a real thing and governments implemented uh, kind of a, a, a mandated lockdown which slowed the world economy drastically. Again, gold's reaction to that event was to pull back. It actually came down 10% over a two week period as people fled to liquidity once again, before going on a six, six month bull run where it surged 35% and silver doubled during that same period of time. So to answer that part of the question, what will happen if Evergrande triggers a serious market event Precious metal investors can probably expect an initial pullback followed by a rally. How long that rally will be and, and, and how much of an upswing will it be will depend on the severity and duration of the impact on the equities markets. It makes a lot of sense, uh, but why hasn't that triggered yet? Is it because the domino effect has just begun? Like it hasn't hit the precious metals yet. It doesn't seem to have hit the precious metals yet. I think we're still waiting for more news I know that Evergrande is, is having to make another payment today, I believe it is. If they aren't able to make that $50 million payment, that will definitely uh, you know, upset the markets, in my opinion. I think we have to just wait a little bit longer to see what the consequences are going to be. But if it's not Evergrande, if it's not the Chinese real estate market in general, it may be another event that will trigger the next crisis. And, and, and I'm just trying to set expectations here for what precious metal investors need to be ready for. And that's, that's so good because I've been hearing from a lot of people or experts that gold really seems to be on a, on a tipping point, that this is almost a really a key moment here because like you said, Mark, and we were talking offline, there's a lot of investors frustrated with the returns on gold, right? But those in it for the long run, 
you know, I definitely have more patience and understand that gold could just, you know, have happen to have that breakout. Uh, you know, what, what are you hearing from investors? I'm definitely starting to hear the rumblings of frustrated uh, precious metal investors. This is something that happens, you know, fairly regularly, um, especially coming off a bull run that we saw in 2020. People were getting excited. Some new investors came into the market. People were adding to their positions on the on the positive price appreciation. And uh, since about you know last October, last November, those prices have cooled off, and they really haven't done much. And and this is so important, Danielle. Again, setting expectations for precious metal investors. I want to remind them: if you look at the last 15 years, particularly, if you look at a 15-year chart for gold or for silver, what you're going to see is yes, you're going to see a long-term up, long-term upward trend, and that's that's a great thing. That's what you you benefit from when you invest. Uh, in a stable, relatively stable commodity like gold and silver. But if you look more closely at that 15-year chart, you're going to notice really two things. Number one is the majority of the time, gold and silver actually trade sideways. They either trade sideways or slightly down, like we're experiencing right now. It's kind of a slow declining market or slightly up. But when you adjust for inflation, it's really just trading sideways. The second thing that you're going to notice is that the majority of appreciation in the price for gold and silver happens almost exclusively during crisis periods. So when you look at the actual returns, the actual significant returns that gold and silver investors earn on their investments, it happens during the crisis periods from 2008 to 2011, 2012, and in 2020. That are, those are the two periods of time, a four-year period in total where gold and silver actually appreciate in value. So you need to set expectations as an investor. You're not going to make a return every day in gold and silver. Absolutely. Really well said, Mark. Uh, I love that that sound uh, sound advice there. But what I'm also hearing from you is you, you have to be prepared and get, you know, ahead of that crisis in a sense. So, you know, is now a, a good time to to enter the gold and silver market? Absolutely, Danielle. I don't want precious metal investors to think that I'm saying, hey, now is a lousy time to be buying gold or holding gold or silver. I'm saying, I'm actually saying the opposite. That's why I'm setting the expectation and saying, look, right now we're traded in a sideways, slightly downward market. This is exactly when you want to be adding to your positions, accumulating more ounces at softer prices, preparing yourself for the next crisis event, whether it be Evergrande, whether it be, again, a broader issue within the Chinese real estate market or another black swan event, which COVID proved to us can happen. When that next crisis happens, the question being when, you will be much better prepared if you own more ounces, not only in terms of having hedged your portfolio properly and having proper diversification amongst your overall portfolio, but also in a good position to realize a handsome gain from your gold and silver holdings. Because again, they perform very, very well during crisis periods. Otherwise, they perform sideways. Really well said. And just um, on that note about frustration and silver, if you don't mind me sharing this story uh, that you told me, and I don't know if I should laugh or cry, but you were actually slated to be a keynote speaker at the Silver Symposium happening in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, you are in Canada now, but we're not able to cross the border to work by land. That's right. Um, I was supposed to connect with you today from the Silver Symposium in right. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Unfortunately, I was uh, declined entry into the United States on Sunday when I attempted to cross the border, double vaccinated, uh, holding my COVID negative PCR test in my hand. Uh, I was turned away due to President Biden's non-essential uh, travel right. ban. And they told you yet, if you had a truck full of chickens, you would have been able to cross. That's right. I, I tried to. It's funny because they never asked me for proof of vaccination or proof of a negative COVID test, which was very surprising. I expected that to be their first question. Instead, they asked me what I was doing. I said I was a keynote speaker at a conference. I was going to meet with some clients and some industry colleagues. I felt that that was important enough to justify my entry into the U.S. And uh, the, the border patrol uh, person informed me that intellectual property was not high on the government's uh, uh, list, uh, but if I was driving a truck full of chickens that I would have had no problem crossing. And basically he said, well, people can just Google what you do. <laughs> well, I guess he had a point because you and I are here making this video today, but 
Well, maybe it'll boost traffic. Thanks, uh, parole officer or P border patrol, whatever his title is. But no, the re the point, and I won't I won't spend more time on this. But what baffles me, and still ba baffles me, you know, to this day, is had you flown, you would have been able to fly. So that would have pre presented less of a risk being in an airplane exposed to hundreds of people crossing through airports with thousands. So you could you could have done that. But being alone in a car going directly to your destination posed a greater health risk. If someone watching can explain to me the logic behind that, I'd appreciate it. I'll put that aside. We're not here to talk politics. We're here to talk gold and silver, uh, more inside scoops. This is what uh, we want to talk about. Shanghai Gold Exchange, Mark. We saw the premiums at the start of this year. Is that coming back to haunt us? You know, it's a global market, Daniela, and there's a lot of trade that happens you know, between different marketplaces in the gold and silver space. So I don't see any way that that cannot spill over into the North American space. And I was saying to you, just before we had this interview, I received an email from one of our largest suppliers telling us that uh, the U.S. Mint was no longer going to be accepting orders, new orders for gold eagles, that inventory for gold eagles was uh, effectively at zero, and that the, the next shipments for gold eagles were two to three weeks out, which means higher premiums are likely coming because inventory of best-selling products is not possible. Will they be as high as we saw earlier this year? I can't tell you for certain today, but they're definitely hinting at higher premiums coming. And I hear, and I see the de demand for physical metal, even though the price is, is soft, the demand for physical metal is still quite strong right now. So I think mm -hmm. there's some encouragement uh, for investors there. Really good insights. Finally, I promised viewers I'd ask you this question. I got so many emails on this. To capsule or not to capsule? They're saying, when if you have coins, do they need to be in capsules? Mark Yaxley. You know, I get this question a lot. Uh, I also get the question, can I touch my coins without gloves on? So we can kind of address both at the same time here. Okay. Look, unless it's a collectible graded, you know, MS70, MS69, gold or silver coin, you can touch and feel your precious metals all day. Uh, put it in, in a capsule or not touching it with your bare hands really doesn't change the value of bullion. Bullion's value is based on the pure uh, metal content of the product, not on its look or feel. But if you're trying to avoid tarnishing of the coin, some people don't like those tarnished silver coins, yeah. they do tarnish over time, then yes, you can put it in a capsule, you'll, you'll slow down the tarnish okay. effect. By wow, doing thank you for solving that. It's like the, the Cadbury mystery, you know? Um, so basically, go crazy, folks. Touch away the coins. Life on the wild side. Mark Yaxley, I appreciate your insights. Thank you, Daniel. And thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you. So be sure to stay tuned to stansberryinvestor.com. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for premier access to content you can't get anywhere else at danielacomboni.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. <laughs>